Um, we had talked a little bit when we were first talking about the basics, about how radiation interacted with matter. Uh, we talked about the linear uh, energy transfer. I showed one picture of that. And I want to just go back and look at that again and talk about low LET radiation, low linear energy transfer radiation, which is predominantly what we'll be dealing with, and high LET. You guys are already familiar with these X-ray interactions because the same interactions that we talked about in terms of uh, uh, scattering in the patient and decreasing our image, in, image quality and things and absorption in the patient are really the things that result in patient dose. So linear energy transfer is defined as the amount of energy deposited per unit path length. So the units are in electron volts per millimeter. It's proportional to the charge of the particle squared. So the more charge something has, the more energy it's going to transfer. And it's inversely proportional to the particle's kinetic energy, which is a little bit counterintuitive. It just so happens that the more kinetic energy it has, the faster it's moving, let's say, the less likely it is, is to in interact. Um, and LET basically is defined by the, is calculated by the specific ionization pairs, right? Say ionization pairs per millimeter times the average energy deposited by ion pair. So the ion pairs can cancel out, and you end up with electron volts deposited per millimeter of tissue traveled. <clears throat> this is what really largely determines the biologic effect of, of radiation. Um, in general, high LET radiation, that from alpha particles, that from protons, remember protons are 2,000 times more massive than an electron, are much more damaging than the low LET radiation we're going to be dealing with uh, electrons, and the ionizing electromagnetic radiation we'll be dealing with gamma rays and x-rays. And I want to make the point, and I'll make it a couple times, right? What happens when gamma rays and x-rays interact in the tissues? Well, first thing they do is produce things like photoelectrons. And so now you have energetic electrons running around. In other words, you've created some low LET particulate uh, radiation by that initial interaction of that X-ray or gamma ray with those electrons in the material. They travel very different paths in matter, okay? So the particle pass length, length is the actual length of the path that it travels, and the range is the depth that it travels. So here's the picture I showed you before. So notice this low LET uh, radiation, so this could be an electron, right? It just bounces around, and it has a very long path length, but its range is quite a bit shorter than that. While high LET radiation, really its path length and its range are about the same. It's that Mack truck when it starts to hit cars on the highway, right? It, they all move out of its way. It continues on its path, if you will. And it turns out that these different types of radiation end up depositing their dose at different depths. And I want to emphasize that. So when you look at electrons, we talked about the fact that energetic electrons really deposit almost all of their dose within tenths of millimeters of where they uh, are emitted from. And notice that's quite different for protons. And this is kind of the idea behind uh, proton beam therapy, that right, protons travel quite a distance, you know, 15 centimeters or so, and this varies a little bit depending upon how energetic they are, what their kinetic energy is, but you can really deposit a tremendous amount of dose at a relatively fixed diff distance. And of course, you can vary where this actually occurs in the body by putting a, some sort of a water bath on the surface of the patient and doing different things. And remember, he, here are photons, here are X-ray photons, so a little bit deeper than that uh, electron surface, and that shouldn't surprise us because, again, they're going to predominantly give their energy um, to electrons uh, when they interact. Um, so we always say, you know, the entrance skin dose is the highest, and that's not quite true, right? It's a little bit below the surface of the skin that actually sees that uh, dose. We've talked about the photoelectric and Compton interactions. I want to go back and again emphasize over and over again those energetic electrons and free radical production that those are going to result in. Remember the photoelectric effect is when one of our X-rays or gamma rays um, interacts <clears throat> typically with one of the inner shell electrons of the atoms that uh, they're in, uh, entering, and they kick those out of the shell and they impart basically 
their energy to that, and so the energy that they have is now the energy of the initial X-ray minus the binding energy, binding shell energy. So quite an energetic photoelectron floating around now interacting with those tissues. In the body, we do still get characteristic or Auger electron production, but notice it's quite low energy, right? This is, uh, this is 3.6 keV. It's just kind of above the visible. Um, I'm sorry, way above the visible, but much lower than things that would ex escape the body. Compton scatter, we talked about, we, we now get this interaction with typically some of these outer shell electrons, and these uh, X-ray photons or gamma ray photons are going to give some of their energy to those and kick them out of the shell. And they're going to continue on in a slightly different direction. And we mentioned the fact that when this occurs, the um, X-ray can scatter off at a substantial angle with relatively small amounts of decrease in their initial energy. And you know, this can, we said, either escape the body and maybe not strike our film, escape the body and backscatter and uh, put dose in the operator, let's say during a fluoro exam, or frankly, this could interact with some other electron in the body, right, and cause a, a photoelectric type interaction or perhaps another Compton type interaction. Um, so a multiple different things that could happen there. And so we then get this, you know, lower, this lower energy 5 uh, keV Compton electron here, so where part of that uh, uh, dose was imparted to it there. So these energetic electrons, right, ionizing electromagnetic radiation like X-rays, gamma rays, uh, is not described by LET, right? LET is specifically meant to describe particulate radiation absorption. Um, and so it doesn't apply to things that have no mass and have no charge. But the first thing that this electromagnetic radiation does is produce those energetic electrons that we just showed examples of again. Um, and those secondary electrons can be described using that LET notion. So it shouldn't be surprising that when we look at the relative weighting factors of how much damage that different types of radiation do, that gamma rays and X-rays really fall in the same category as low LET radiation like uh, energetic electrons, okay? Those energetic electrons produced, we've mentioned the fact that they can produce uh, many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of ion pairs. And because the body is composed of a lot of water, a lot of those are hydroxyl rad radicals, right? OH minus, um, which can have quite a deleterious effect there. So